we are talking uh, from Revelation 17 and looking at verse 3 where it says, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. So that is the key. Uh, that is the Antichrist kingdom. And um, full of names of blasphemy. We talked about blasphemy being uh, speaking evil of or cursing. That that's another description of him. In verse four, it says the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. So I want you to see in scripture about Isaiah, Isaiah chapter one, what it says about scarlet or red. Isaiah chapter one and verse 18, it says, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, do you see that right there? This picture, this verse gives you that picture that sin in color is scarlet. And then it says, they shall be white as snow, though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Let me tell you that when a sinner turns to the Lord in repentance and gets the blood of Jesus to wash you could confess your your sins you repent of your sins repentance is a stop what you're doing quit those sins terrible things that people do and I'm not pointing fingers because it says there's not one of us that has not sinned we've all sinned um, we all need this repentance we all need to ask the Lord to cover us with his blood but before that happens your sins are as the color of scarlet and that's why you can see that the kingdom of the beast the beast is clothed in scarlet and so is this woman she's clothed in scarlet it, it says in that verse 4 that she uh, is arrayed in purple and purple has the the connotation of royalty royalty I can look in chapter 18 and see that she has decided that she is a queen. It says 18 and seven, how much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. So she sees herself as royalty. And I see that in the purple and the scarlet denoting a sinful nature because uh, she has a cup in her hand that's full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And when I look here and I see that she's decked, it says decked with gold and precious stones and pearls and having a golden cup in her hand that and she has indulged herself greatly. Um, you can look in Revelation 18 and three, it says, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. This is, uh, this woman is, um, she craves the finer, richest things in life. Whatever her eye desires, that's what she wants. I can look a little bit farther. 11 to 14, it says, The merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buys their merchandise anymore. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thyan wood and all manner of vessels of ivory, all manner of vessels of most precious wood 
and of brass and iron and marble. And verse 13, and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour, wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. Everything that she has desired. And, and you know what? These things, it has made the nations rich through the abundance of her desires. Yeah. Uh, I can look on and, and just see uh, in 16 it says, saying, alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. And verse 19 it says, they cast dust on their heads and cried weeping and wailing saying alas alas that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness for in one hour she is made desolate that's talking about her destruction there but you can see in those passages how she has um, such an abundance of desires now here's the thing, when we get to the next verse, in verse five, it says upon her head, forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. This is a mystery as to who this is. I sometimes, you know, um, David Wilkerson wrote a book, Set the Trumpet to Your Mouth. In that book, he said he believed that New York was that great city. In that city, uh, of course, that New, New York could be uh, compared to probably like any great city in the United States, like uh, Los Angeles or San Francisco, New York, um, New York. Uh, any of the other big cities, right? Yeah. And New York has the United Nations and that there is probably part of it. But I see all these trains come through here. I think last week, as I was watching last week's video, I said to George, I think that there was probably five or six trains that passed through as we were having our class. Um, you can hear them come through. And if you've ever seen these trains, they are full of shipping containers. Right. They're uh, at least too high, uh, only, you know, double-deckers. And these containers have come from all over the world through, because they, you can see through the great oceans. China on them, China shipping, Mediterranean. Right. Uh, there's just numerous of them, along with things that are from here in the United States. And I, I sometimes think, what nation is like America in her wealth and her desire for merchandise? Um, and that makes me alarmed because this is the country I love. I think about uh, when we say, I pledge allegiance to the flag. Mm -hmm. and, and it says, one nation under God. And you look at your money, all the forms of money say, in God we trust. And I think, is that mocking God? Because of some of the things that this nation some is of them are for sure. guilty. I, 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 you know, I want to say not everybody's bad, Lord. You, you know, yeah. it's like, um, but I do think about that. I do think about that. I think Lamentations 4 is, is also yeah. talking about some of this same stuff. They, Said they in five verse four or five verse four said they did do delicately delicately are desolate in the streets they that were brought up in scarlet embrace dunghill for the punishment of the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the punishment of the sin of Sodom that was overthrown as in the moment and no hand stayed on her. It's always talking about the sins of the scarlet that's referring to the mystery Babylon the whore the make-believe church or the opposite of the church yes and you know
know what? I just read you out of Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Hosea, and that's talking about Israel. Right. So this is God's chosen people, and yet have they been faithful? You know, I just think, it, that's why it says Mystery Babylon. Right. Because I think, well, America's guilty. But then I think Israel's guilty uh -huh. because I can see it in black and white right here in the scripture. Well, if you go over there, I mean, a lot of people we watch are usually preachers taking tours over there and going to all the religious sites and the Christian sites and, and teaching on how it's important to us and what it meant. But I tell you, they said Tel Aviv has got the biggest community of gays of anywhere. Wow. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah, and sin is everywhere. Yeah, so you think right there, you think of most people when they think of Israel, they think of Judaism, religion, Christianity. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them have no idea what Judaism and Jesus or any of it is about. Right, that's right. Okay, uh, here's the thing too, is that calls her Babylon. And you know, Babylon um, wasn't too long ago that Saddam Hussein, do you remember how he was rebuilding Iraq? Saddam Hussein, yeah. I'm, you're, you're familiar with who I'm, right. I mean, he met his, his demise. demise. Uh, but before he did, he was wanting to make Iraq the wealthy and rich like the Babylon of old, yeah, right? Of gardens and everything. I, I don't see that happening. Uh, and I don't point myself or point to Iraq as being the Babylon, the, this mystery Babylon is. But I do want to remember that in Genesis, and I turn over into Genesis chapter 11, that at one time in history, now you know if you're going to Genesis 11, this is after the flood, okay? This is after Noah's time, but not too long after that. It says that 11.1, um, Genesis 11.1, 1, the whole earth was of one language and of one speech, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east and they found a, a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Shinar is in that land of Iraq. It's over there, close to the Euphrates. They call that the Fertile Crescent, and, and most historians will say that's the beginning of the population, population of the world. Yeah. Uh, if you look it up, it says uh, a plain in Babylon. Uh, Shine, or Shinar is a country of two rivers, the ancient name for the territory later known as Babylonia or Chaldea. Right. Okay. That's right. In, in verse 4, it's it says, They said, Go to, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the whole face of the whole earth. Uh, and the Lord came down to the, to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will restrain from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them from thence upon the face of the whole earth, and they left off to build the city. Verse nine says, therefore it is called Babel because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. From thence did the Lord scatter them from abroad, abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Babel in, the, Babel in the Genesis 11 is Babylon of Shinar. If you look that up in your dictionary, it will tell you that Babel and Babylon is the same. Okay. 
and that means confusion. Yeah, you know, there's really the world, you know, people just mock God. They have a program you can download or have on your phone or something. It's a, to learn other language, it's called Babel. Right? That's just, you know, trying to have everybody have one speech or to understand one another. I mean, we're there already. Right. Yes, yes, we are there. Yeah. Tech, technology is yeah. advanced so that, and basically it's saying here, the, there's no stopping these people, so we're just going to confuse them yeah. and, and stop what they have purpose. But that tower to reach heaven was, it's like, there are a lot of people that have this thought that they can get to heaven, right? I'm going to heaven, but I'm not going through Jesus. Wow. I'm going to go my own way. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. There's only one way. Jesus is the way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. That's in John 14, 6. So you can't trust in Buddha, Buddha, or Muhammad, or any of those others. They did not die for your sins. Right. Jesus took our sins. Jesus is the one that went to the cross. And his blood is what makes atonement for our, our sins, for the soul. Uh, there is no other way. So even if a president like of the United States says, oh, sure, those, this one can go to heaven and this one, because he's a president doesn't mean, and I'm not talking about uh, Joe. This is no, former president. Yes, it was. But did, did Joe say that to you? No, but there was I one. Remember. I remember one of the Bushes. Yes, yes. Bush Jr. Yeah, oh sure. This. Do you think all these other religions? Oh sure. No, that's not what Jesus said. And I, I'm going to stick with what the book says. Yeah, the book says, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way. Um, so I see that confusion. And, and, I, and that's where we're going to end with that verse. Or did you have a question? No. I'm just trying to remember what you said for Babylon. Babylon. Confusion. It means confusion. Yeah, I've seen that, but you said it's... Babel and Babylon is the same. Okay. Is the same. We really have run out of time, so I'm going to ask Sister Ada if she'll go ahead and close us tonight in prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We just praise you. God, I feel your presence here. I thank you, Lord, for your teaching spirit that's here, God. Lord, and I just see and I just quake at the thought of, of partaking of all of these luxuries and delicacies that I was used to be interested in, things of the world. God, I just ask you, Lord, to let your people be chaste and separated from these things and stay serious about our walk with you, Lord. We just thank you for the privilege to praise you and thank you and we ask you lord to be with us and bring us back safe bless all the ears that hear this message give them a hunger and teach them lord jesus and separate us from these things help us be ready for your second coming we ask it in jesus name amen, amen.